I hope y'all are doing well today. My name's OCD, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down trending VFX from Netflix's hit show, Wednesday. More specifically, the character FX that brought Thing to life. This effect requires a plan. Think about where your light sources are and do your best not to obstruct any of those light sources. You do not want to cast shadows when creating your clean plates, as well as making sure that there's consistency in camera angle, focal length, and focus. So once you start recording, leave it rolling. Don't touch your camera, use a remote recording app to start and stop your footage if need be, or even take a longer take all the way through where you have a little bit of tail room as well as headroom to give you the flexibility in your clean plate. You wouldn't want to further complicate your shots by adding obstructions with masking that you'll have to subtract after the fact. So think about where your shot is going to be and the compositing before you even finish shooting so that way things can be as seamless as possible. Now in this instance, I avoided motion. Now in this instance... Now in this instance, I avoided moving the camera because I didn't want to have to do any motion tracking as well as 3D environment replication to allow me to make a clean plate that would fit and be tracked to the environment. What did I use? Um, to ensure the seamless marriage between the CG and the practical, we're going to be using some effects makeup to make things blend a bit better. I used concealer on the lightest tone it could go, as well as some eyeshadow and eyeliner to accentuate the stitches as well as contrast in my knuckles and any wrinkles. Thankfully, because it was cold out, my hand naturally turned blue in color, which helped emphasize that the hand is dead and beat up while still being alive. This really grounded the scene in reality as well as making it feel weirder, just off and wonky, as well as actually shaving my hand to really allow the makeup to stick and fit in place and make me look that much paler. Now in hope of making my life easier, I decided to leave the stump of the hand itself secluded from the shots. You really only get one or two angles where you'd actually see the backing of it. This was very intentional to ensure that I had to do the least amount of work possible to achieve the best result. Once again, allowing me to spend my time elsewhere, like accentuating the details that matter. Firstly, open up your project inside of Premiere Pro as well as create a new After Effects project. To start, immediately save your project with a clear and concise name that can be easily found in your desired location. We are going to start by opening up our Premiere project, right clicking on our first VFX clip, replacing the footage with an After Effects composition. Jumping back into Premiere, undo the replace composition. We are doing this to avoid complications later down the line and maintaining the integrity of our raw footage as we will be replacing after exporting. Opening up the footage pre-comp, create a clean plate pre-comp using the beginning of the footage before your subject comes into frame by splitting the clip using Control shift d followed by Control shift c to pre-comp. Drag the clean plate pre-comp into your main comp above the plate. Duplicate the plate, set it as the top layer, rename it to hand. This is where our rotoscoping will commence. Right click on the hand layer, open, open layer, then click alt w on your keyboard. This will open up our Roto Brush tool. For the best results, set your brush version to 2.0 as well as brush quality to best. I prefer a higher feather on shots like these and I reduce the chatter from anywhere to 12 to maybe 22%. Do not check motion blur until after you are finished rotoscoping and only decontaminate edge colors if you are completely replacing the background to something new. To ensure your roto holds, avoid getting too close to the edges. You want the tool to find our elements without us entirely holding its hand. Never go closer to the edge than needed. The roto will not hold if you do so. Be sure to give Thing elements to interact with. Without characters or snow or fabric, anything dynamic that actually moves the composition of the frame, it feels lackluster and doesn't actually feel immersed into your scene. Mounding. Start this over, start this over. Once my roto is done freezing, obviously this is not in real time, I duplicate my plate once more, this time sitting below my hand roto. 
I will then open Mocha using the stitching as a practical tracking marker due to the heavy contrast and luminance. Once tracked, I create a rough mask for my hand's shadow and general snow displacement. I then link the mask to the hand track, animating as needed. Saving and exiting Mocha, I toggle into the map module, then click Create AE Masks, deleting the track mask and setting the shadow's feather to around 66. I then create a snow displacement plate using the extra space at the end of my footage, following the animation of my hand very closely by animating through toggling the stopwatch. Take your time with this, as it must be accurate. I like to add a few keyframes for the crucial shapes first, and then fill in the dead space afterwards to refine the mask. Set the feather on this mask high as well. Now in, an, now, now, in an ideal world, you want to film your shot strategically, manipulating the perspective so the viewer cannot see the back of Thing's hand. However, in these shots, there are a few moments where you would be able to see the flesh behind the stump itself. If you would like to see a tutorial on how to do a 3D object track, as well as extending out the wrist, be sure to leave a like on this video as well as a comment down below, and I will get to it as soon as I can. However, I would always recommend doing this practically using effects makeup and prosthetics. This allows the lighting to be more naturally integrated and significantly less hassle in dealing with the motion tracking of an object inside 3D space. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know what you learned below. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. It would mean the world if you hit subscribe as well as the notification bell so you're aware of when I post new videos every single Thursday. And until next time, be sure to seize the day and keep learning.